Um, but yes, I just have to get this off of my mind. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to post this video. I just feel like talking. Um, but yeah, so the topic of today is let's talk Haitian voodoo. Let's just talk about voodoo in general. And like the reason I felt like making this video is because I feel like in 2023, here's what I'm saying. I am 26 years old, okay? And um, I grew up in church, but I've always been the type of person to always ask questions. Ever since I was a child, I needed my, I always had, I needed my ans my questions to be answered. And I wasn't satisfied with, um, I don't know, or, you know what I'm saying? I'm not sure, I don't understand. Like, you know, I was always a very um, curious child. And I don't know if any of you guys are um, familiar or have been to church or familiar with like church culture, especially black church culture, Haitian church culture, Caribbean church culture. Um, you're not supposed to ask questions. You know what I'm saying? Um, even you're not supposed to be curious. You're not supposed to be looking for answers. Um, even asking questions is seen somehow like you're doing like you're doing something in a justice against god you're not supposed to ask questions you're not supposed to be curious you're not supposed to ponder um you're just supposed to have faith uh blind faith you're just supposed to trust in the lord trust in the bible and if you did have questions um that you know didn't necessarily have um an appropriate answer or 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 if you ask a difficult question, you know, you were always um, told to, you know, have faith in God or you don't need to be thinking about these things or stuff like that. And so I'm sure a lot of you are like familiar with that. So when I was, I would say 17, um, I guess right before I left to college, you know, I still was under the Jesus programming. I still was under... Like, I still went to church, you know, but I started questioning things more and more. And the number one thing that kind of made me go in a di different direction, really, was the concept of hell. And hell has always been, you know, as a Christian, I was never really Christian because I had too many questions. One thing that had always been a point of contention for me growing up, I remember like being in being like four or five years old was the concept of hell and like you know thinking like as I had more questions in my mind thinking about the concept of hell and I remember thinking like I don't deserve hell you know what I'm saying like if today I decided not to accept Jesus as my Christ my Lord and personal Savior if today I decided to have a different thought, if to, if to, today I decided to denounce Jesus for whatever reason, you know, that would make me deserving of hell. And that never really sat right with me. First of all, I know this might be a little bit um, shocking to some people. I never asked Christ to die for me. You know, I never asked him to come back to earth. I never asked him to die for my sins. But now, all of a sudden, I owe him my life, my soul. I just think that just never really sat right with me. And, for example, it just always made me feel very uncomfortable, like going up into onto the um, the uh, the altar, as they as they say, and you know, and accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and you know. I guess being convicted of my sins it's just it was never something that felt good in my heart of course I participated because that was that's what everyone else around me was doing 
But in my heart, I didn't feel it. In my heart, I didn't accept it. And so around 17, 18, 19 was when I really started to question, you know, religion and what my role was in this life regarding religion and stuff like that. And I started, you know, kind of thinking for myself. And um, I would say by the time I was 20, I was like, I don't really want anything to do with Jesus. Like this Jesus character, um, he doesn't represent me. I don't, you know, I don't feel in my heart um, that, you know, this is something that I should be giving my life to. Um, what happened to free will? You know, what happened to um, choosing, making my own decisions? I just didn't, it just never, it just never sat right with me. And, um, and I was just able to kind of like transition from that, that frame to another. And with that being said, I'm Haitian. Um, I was born and raised in America, but you know, my mother is Haitian. My father is Haitian. They were both born and raised in Haiti. Um, you know, I'm a proud Haitian. I'm proud of my culture. I'm proud of my heritage. I'm proud of my genetics. I'm proud of where my family comes from. And with that pride about who I am and like my my roots and my culture and my family, you know, I started to become a little bit more I guess curious is the word, but thirsting for knowledge, you know, like why, like, you know, after I had left the church, why were all these things considered bad? Why is voodoo so-called bad? Why is witchcraft so-called bad? Why is um, a medium, a psychic, all these things, why is that bad? But you have prophets and you have people who are seers in church and you have people who can speak into your life. That's okay. But on the other side, medium, prophet, all that, that's not okay. Voodoo, that's not okay. And as I begin trying to, you know, balance these like thought forms in my head, I'm very grateful for my father um, my father has always been very agnostic um, in his beliefs, so he's never been the one to push um, religion onto me, which I'm very grateful for that. And um, it was it gave me the um, it gave me the confidence to explore and read and learn about um, other thought forms, other religions, other ways of viewing life and um, metaphysics. I got into really. I got really into like the medical meta meta metaphysical part of the world and um my dad being a Haitian man uh raised in Haiti he also um is a very intelligent man and he was also able to kind of like break down and kind of teach me you know throughout the years little, little bits and pieces about Haitian culture and um and our history and our connection with voodoo and he was able to like sit me down and like and educate me and because i had left the jesus programming i was able to actually sit down and um listen to what he said he had to say and take it in and kind of digest it for myself and one thing that i have learned throughout this you know i guess journey the spiritual journey of mine is you know, you know, Haitians in particular, at least in my opinion, are very powerful. And a lot of us don't know how powerful we really are. And um, the amount of um, the spirituality that Haitians carry within their DNA is um i wouldn't say unlike anything but it's very unique um because of how we were able to um liberate ourselves from from slavery and that all was directly related to um to voodoo and 
And the more I learned, the more I listened to my dad, the more I became, you know, fascinated, the more I wanted to know more. And um, the more I kind of, I wouldn't say fell in love, but I began to have like a deep reverence and like a deep respect for, um, for voodoo. And I remember very particular um, this memory when I used to be in church. Um, our pastor, he would go on on these um, mission missionary trips to Haiti, and he, all he he would always come back with horror stories about voodoo and how they eradicated it, and um, they converted the people, you know, that they went to to Christianity. And I just always thought it just sounded like. It sounded like bullshit to me. It sounded like colonialism to me, like sitting in that pew pit. I was probably right before I went to college, I was still in high school sitting in that pew pit thinking about it. I'm just like, this doesn't feel right to me. Like, and again, you know, I went back and I reported to my dad at that, so I reported to my dad about how evil voodoo was and stuff like that. And he corrected me real quick. He was like, that's wrong. There is n nothing inherently evil about Haitian voodoo. And if you really read into the religion, like I have been reading and studying and trying to learn more about the Loa and the different um, names and the verbiages, at its core, voodoo is about unity with yourself and the world around you. Unity with yourself and with nature. Unity with yourself and your higher self. Unity with yourself and bon Dieu, which is God. Unity with yourself and the loi, which is um, spirit. And the more I learned, the more I learned about how beautiful um, the religion was, how they honor um, the feminine, and that's something that you don't see in Christianity. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Where is the where is the, the feminine essence? Oh, they say the church. And it's just like you, you ha like how do you how do you sit in a religion? There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and it completely removes the feminine essence of that. Like it should be mommy, daddy, and child, but it completely Christianity completely eradicates and and um, kind of mutes the importance of the feminine essence in our worlds, in our daily lives, in um, in when it comes to the balance of of the earth. And Haitian voodoo does not. And that's one thing that I've learned, and I've definitely come to like appreciate and love is like the appreciation for for truth that voodoo has the appreciation for honesty the appreciation for listen they don't have they it's not they're not mincing words it it, it either you is or you isn't either you built for this shit or you're not and um i just found it to be really beautiful and i was just i found myself feeling so lucky to have a connection to um, a spiritual. I I don't practice voodoo. Um, no one in my immediate family that I know of practices voodoo, but it is a part of my culture. It is a part of who I am simply because I'm Haitian, and a lot of people may not agree with me on this, but I just think that you know it's important for us to confront our biases, and it's important for us to understand why do we have certain feelings or certain thoughts or certain um connotations with with um with certain things like is that coming from us or is that just what we've been told and as like i promise you and i've started to read books um one of the most recent books i read it is called the haitian voodoo handbook it's kind of gives you gives you like a kind of a layout of you know the loi um, the sectors are different types of loi. It's like, like, kind of like the books described. It's a handbook um, to teach you about. It teaches the, the very basics of Haitian voodoo. And the more I read, I read into the book. 
the more I found beauty in voodoo and how um, and the more I understood that you know our power comes from our like like voodoo is I'm sorry whoever is going to be offended by this but voodoo is who we are at our very core it is in our DNA like we these lois they they were created so that we would be able to um to stand on our own and they help and they want to help and they are um beautiful spirits even the scary ones they have a job to do even the even the ones that are um considered to be um hot hot loa or loa sho um they're beautiful because they have a job to do and haitian and as i study more and more about voodoo one thing that it makes me understand is you know good and evil are very subjective and as a christian that's not that's that's not something that i could easily understand it's it's either good or it's good but hey good and evil it's it, it it's very subjective it's like okay for example fire it is is in in and of itself is very neutral um it can give you warmth it can cook your food it can um you know protect you from the elements it can you know feed you but you know it can also burn you fire can suffocate you um fire can um burn you alive it can burn your lungs you know fire can destroy your crops fire can destroy your home but just because fire has a capability of doing those things does that make fire evil absolutely not and i think learning and understanding this that's how i go about haitian voodoo is voodoo in, in and of itself evil bad no it just is it exists there are there are positive polarities and there are negative polarities like what is your intention what are you using it for are you using it for negative purposes are you using it for black magic are you using it to hurt people um, those who are, you know, you know, voodoo zans understand that everything comes back to you, you know. So you, even if, even if you use the loi, they, because they will do it. You, you know, they, you know, even if you use the loi for negative things, you know, and if and if you are initiated and you have that power and you have a connection, they will do it doesn't mean that they will like it doesn't mean that um that they enjoy it but they have a job to do you know what i'm saying and i think with that understanding it kind of you know it it it, it, it's, it gave me like a reflection for for you know the world you know voodoo is only as pure as the person who is utilizing it um, it's only as good or as evil as the person who is utilizing it. And the same thing can be said for Christianity. Um, how many pedophiles, how many rapists, how many killers, how many murderers have used the name of Jesus to justify um, the diabolical evil things that they have done? It's the same thing. Um, same thing for Catholicism. Same thing for Islam. It's just like these things in and of itself self is not necessarily bad it's just how do you choose to go about it how do you choose to utilize it how do you choose to um go about your your day-to-day -day life and um yeah like and i follow this girl on um, youtube i i can't really think of her name if this goes up i might link her channel down below but she had made a great point and it was very beautiful and i think that you see so much division and so much turmoil and so much that 
in Haiti, it's because we have yet to claim who we are. We have yet to stand firm. And I don't believe Haiti will ever, 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 you know, um, stand in the glory that she needs to be until the people of Haiti rightfully claim what is theirs. And what I mean by that is voodoo. That's ours. And if you know anything about the state of the world, if you know anything about, you know, um, what's going on behind the veil, if you know anything about, you know, um, forces that are unseen and unheard that, you know, run the country, run the world, they use our shit. They use our loi. You can you can look this shit up. They use our magic, you know, and that's one thing that just breaks me and I and um it hurts me because as of right now, these are the most powerful beings on earth using our stolen shit. And then these same people are turning around and telling us it's evil, telling us it's bad, telling us it's demonic, just like the 666. And some, I kind of, you know, you can't really, you can't really talk about this with everybody. And I remember, I'm going to say your name, a couple years back, I had a conversation with this guy I had a huge crush on, but he hated my fucking guts. Um... His name was Victor, and I kind of, I casually mentioned to him that 666 is the, um, is the makeup of black people's DNA, of a black man's DNA. He called me brainwashed. But you can look this shit up. Like, you can, it's, you can, you can, you can look it up, you can verify it. It is our bio it's our medical um genetical makeup six 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 protrons six neutrons six electrons it's not evil it just is and so you know the powers that be are having us look at ourselves and run the opposite direction and when we do that look at the state of haiti look at the state of anyone from the african diaspora I'm not saying everyone should just, you know, pick up a chaka and, you know, start, you know, um, praising Lua. But I'm saying to step back, leave your biases at the door and actually confront voodoo for what it is, not for how people have been using it, but understand the beauty of voodoo and how it is very... Um, it melds beautifully with nature. It, it it flows beautifully with the um with the natural essences and essences of the world. And I can't stop smiling and I'm here because I'm just like and how dare they, you know, take something, use it against us, and then ban us from using it. I mean, not everybody and a lot of you watching this understand this, but a lot of people, like some of my closest family members, you can't even have this conversation with them because they're so programmed to the Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm just like, no, there is more to life than Jesus. Like, do you know that there are, they, like these people in CIA are calling on Dumbala as we speak? Like, do you know that? Is real Fida? They're calling on her as we speak? to dismantle us that's our shit our deities and it's just it's infuriating that you that people can't see what it is for what it is stand up take your power back um don't be afraid of that now, I'm not saying to just jump in. I'm not saying to I'm not saying to start practicing things that you don't understand, but at least read up on it. Build your knowledge. Um under and and read to understand, not to judge, not to crucify, not to already put into this preconceived box of what you think it is. 
um yeah that's all i have to say um but yeah i'm going to be i'm going to keep researching i'm going to keep reading into voodoo i'm going to keep um talking about it i'm going to keep respecting it and showing reverence um to this part of myself because you know maybe someone you know similar to me might come across this video and it'll wake them up and they'll wake other people up and so on and so forth you never know but just stand up you know wherever culture you're from whether you be from africa and i you know i know africa is not a country but whether wherever you're from read into the spiritual practices of your ancestors research that and see if what would happen if you were to incorporate some of this stuff now, I'm not saying to go willy-nilly and dibble and dabble in things that you don't understand and start hexing people and, and lighting candles, but just just see. And I think the world is so much is so much more magical. It's so much more um eye-opening, mind-blowing, extraordinary, miraculous than we could ever possibly conceive but everyone has this veil over their eyes and they can't see the world for what it is but i'm not saying i can't see the world for i'm not saying i can see the world for what it is i'm not saying that at all but what i am saying is i can feel some things and i know some shit and i feel like if more haitian people would just embrace that part of ourselves in haiti as we speak you know call upon these lua at a national level like imagine you know what i'm saying if like 400,000 people 500,000 people came in and called on the name of you know i can't really mention um one of the lua who's for protection one of the lua who don't play about his children one of the lua who will go out go for war on their behalf imagine what what shit we would be able to shake up you know and i say that to say um don't underestimate you know your magic and i've heard of people who could literally um teleport from one direction to another change it to animals you know some people like some people who live in haiti have you know personal experience of that and I have heard it said beautifully, like, if some of us have that within our DNA, why don't all of us do? Well, I think all of us do. It's just that we don't have access to it because it starts in here. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Just read up on your spiritual practices uh, of your ancestors. Um, don't bash something without first understanding it. If you don't understand it, then honestly, you don't really have any um, room to speak. And I used to think that voodoo was evil or bad or um, or something to stay away from. But until I did my own research, until I started learning and you know, really evaluating um, my biases, I found out the opposite. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about the topic. Um, hopefully this made sense. I know I was rambling a lot. So, bye.